Hey everybody, I want to take you through one of the tools that we use when we develop an off-season training program for an athlete here at Fast Cat Coaching. What you see here is a basic uh, Microsoft Excel worksheet and what you're looking at is just a general calendar layout from September through the end of the 2012 racing season in August. Um, what you see here is every single Monday and then you hear of have each week numbered starting with number one and there's basically about you know 50 weeks in this annual training program so this is the 2012 season uh, the athlete's name the coach what we have initially set up are the athletes top races and this is generally known from a conversation that we have with the athlete uh, this particular athlete wants to do well in the Boulder Roubaix next year, wants to go to Baton Kill, tour the Gila, and then Killington um, over Memorial Day. And he'll come up with some more top races as, uh, as the offseason goes on. But from those top races, we know, hey, we're going to do some field testing here at the end of October. Uh, we're going to do some more testing after some more training in January to make sure we're on track. In March we're gonna test at the end of his base and uh, then in April prior to the Tour of the Gila we're gonna do a 20-minute field test just to make sure he's on track and see how fast he's gotten over the entire offseason. Um, and along the way once uh, the race season starts we'll get all of their testing data from races. Racing is is training racing is testing uh, so let me orient you to the sheet um, we have the race calendar and again this isn't super specific to every Saturday and Sunday but at least you can see that starting in April we know that's the first big race Mount Evans you know is, is on the radar and the season ends around uh, just before Labor Day so what that tells us basically is okay season starts in April seasons over in August and we have this entire block of time to train and that makes up the off-season and that allows us to start setting up the off-season so this athlete he's taken his postseason break he's given a couple weeks to do some fun riding um, this is what we call a fall foundation it's color-coded here um, to the blue here uh, this athlete then what you're seeing here is volume and hours you can see a basic periodization some training here more training here more and then kind of a final overload before a rest week and what that does is it gets them back in the general level of fitness before they do a, a field test here um, then we start them on a resistance training program it's 10 weeks four phases one two three four it's cycling specific and it's not just gym work there's neuromuscular w sprinting that is coupled to the strength and the power phases we'll get into that in a second so we do three weeks of adaptation two weeks of hypertrophy two weeks of strength and then approximately two to three weeks of power and this uh, usually is about two weeks of power and then we add in a week of uh, metrics that may even go on into January and February if the rider's a sprinter, needs to develop some explosive power, or uh, is responding really well to the uh, strength and conditioning program. So the adaptation phase, hypertrophy phase, again, strength and power. Uh, strength transfer, this is basically where you move the strength that you gained in the, in the weight room over onto the bike. You can see the general periodization again. Uh, you're not doing too much riding when you're lifting. Uh, when you're in during the hypertrophy phase, it's fairly difficult, so there's not that much riding. And besides, it's still November and December. It's very early. Once you get into the strength phase, you're riding um, a little bit more here. This is about when the longer rides, fun group rides, can begin. Um, once the power phase starts, it's fairly easy from a uh, physiological stress standpoint, and you can begin uh, 
the group rides on Saturdays and Sundays, endurance, so forth. What we like to do is in the do one big volume week right after the power phase, do a regeneration block, and then test. And what this is a in the middle of the winter is a nice time to come in and do a true blue physiological test, VO2 max, maximal lactate steady state, really get some good numbers, and then use those numbers to compare and work off of for the rest of the season. Um, you'll notice that there's no defined numbers here. It's not like we have 10, 12, 14. We work with our athletes to determine what the best uh, use of their time is. Some, a lot of people are time limited. It's pretty common that we'll take uh, a business trip and schedule our generation block over top of that strategically. A lot of people have spring break mid-March, college athletes, um, people with families, athletes will schedule a spring break trip and uh, they might be able to ride a couple hours a day. Um, let me get into the details of the resistance training. You see this tab down here in the lower left. This is a, a sheet that all of our athletes get in the off season, but you go over to this resistance training and what you see here is the athlete's name, coach, and the 1RM. It stands for one resistance maximum. Uh, every athlete will go into the gym, find out how much they can squat, leg press and leg curl one time. That number goes into the sheet here. They can do a thousand pounds. There's a macro, then <laughs> they should be doing this, but that's unrealistic. Um, so say you do 300 pounds here, you go to the gym, you do your hypertrophy, uh, heavy workout, you're going to do two sets, 10 to 12 reps per set at 65% of your 1RM, and that equals 195 pounds for the squat, you do 162 pounds for the leg press and leg curl. Therefore, when you go into the weight room, you know exactly how many sets you're to do per workout, how many reps and how much to lift for each set and rep. You'll see we do hypertrophy heavy, hypertrophy light. We'll do a strength phase where you're going from 70% all the way to 85%. And then in the second week, you'll go from 85% of your 1RM, 1RM all the way up to 100%. Uh, then you'll get into the power phase. And let me back up for a second. This, the hypertrophy is basically medium weight, a lot of rep. If you hear people talking in the gym about what they're doing, the strength phase is heavy loads, not that many reps. And then the power phase is really lightweight and not that many repetitions, but you're really emphasizing the velocity of the lift, explosiveness, um, we'll actually do jump squats here, really explosive lifting here, and with the leg curl here. And uh, this is also where you'd incorporate plyometrics. Okay, so we've uh, talked about field testing, and what do we do with those numbers? Well, basically, we are going to set the athlete's training zones from there. And that's uh, what you see in this spreadsheet here. Their FTP is 287 watts. And that's going to define their zone two wattage, tempo wattage, sweet spot, threshold, VO2s, and, and their zone six. Not that we do any of that work in the off season, but at least they'll have that for next year. Um, similarly, with threshold heart rate, you'll, they'll know they'll to do a basic endurance ride. They'll park it between 116 and 139 beats per minute. One of the other things we do with the field testing data is initially is we set up their power profile. This is the power profile chart developed by Dr. Andy Coggin. And you can see this athlete did 272 watts September 21st of 2010, weighed 150 pounds, that's 67 and a half kilograms, which his power to weight 
gives him a 20 minute 4 watts per kilogram. And we can use this for a comparison for when he tests again. Hopefully he'll be up in the 4.3, 4.5 range. And then also this gives us, if he's a new athlete to us or if he's just getting into some racing for next year, this is going to give us a general idea of what category they are. Cat, category 3, Category 2. This athlete's uh, basically it's going to be a pretty fast Cat 3 or kind of a, a, a rookie Cat 2. We haven't set up his 5 second, 1 minute, and 5 minute power outputs, but this is going to give us a general idea of what category he can enter. And then when he does, he's going to be able to compete at uh, in time trials and hill climbs at this level. Not necessarily um, where he can sprint and ride aggressively. That'll, that'll come later when we get some uh, preseason data and also some preseason race data. And we will test again here, test again here, make sure we're on track in March, and then get the final preseason test in here. And whenever they the athlete would go do a time trial, such as in the Gila, uh, Killington here. We're going to get that data and we're going to use that to update their zones and then also update their power profile. All right, so this is the general overview. Uh, this helps us stay on track during the off season. Once you get into the season, the racing uh, predominantly dictates the training that's going to occur midweek. You can see that uh, the Gila is one of the, the top, top goals. So we're going to try to taper down into the Gila for that. Uh, and then hold that peak form after Gila all the way through Memorial Day. After Memorial Day, uh, we'll take a mid-season break. It's about five to seven days, including a non-competitive weekend of no training. And then... We're gonna do, we're gonna reload in the summer, raise the CTL, increase the training load, uh, ride a lot more, take a regeneration block, and then the athlete has about seven weeks of racing to look forward to. And again, this is a general view. This is customized for this athlete. Um, no two annual training plans are the same, but this is the worksheet that we use with all of our athletes and it helps us stay on track. So I hope you found this helpful. Again, annual training plan, resistance training, zones, power profile. Thanks a lot and please let us know if you have any questions.